guys, and welcome to me reading my book on Wattpad. Right now, I am at church, so... And I get to listen to her. Because she's creepy and stalkerish. And I'm proud. So, let me get to the book that I was reading last time, that I know you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed at least. No one slapped the like button like I was hoping, so I don't know if I'm going to continue this much longer. But if you guys want me to, please tell me in the comments, Hey, Crystal, please continue. I am enjoying this. So, here we are. Let me skip that. I don't really want to read the 50k special thing. So, yeah, let's begin. Back from the half mouse point of view. They're idiots. Do they forget me? Do they even care? No, they care. Stop this. Things are different now. I begin to cry. Weakness. I have to fight this shadow thoughts. I can't lose them again. Narrator's point of view. Afma was talking to herself. Lawrence was worried that she would lose control, then turn her blade on them. He couldn't stand hurting her. Then out of nowhere, Afma began to scream and fell forward, glorious white wings sprouting from her back. Then Afma started to glow right and screamed even more. Then it hit him. The Irene in her was fighting the Shadow Knight, essentially killing her from inside out. As the wing disappeared, her eyes began to change. There was a bright flash, and... On the floor, in front of them, was Afma, fully armored like a shadow knight, and red particles surrounding her. Eventually, they decided that Afma would stay in her old house with 24-7 watch. Garth agreed to first shift, because he needed to catch up with her. Then something happened. Afma yanked off the helmet and screamed, Everything's dark! I can't see! Lawrence stiffened and, in and knew what was happening. It had happened to them, him those years ago. Remembering Afma taking care of him, he reached up, and as he did so, Afma didn't know he was coming, and slashed her sword, cutting Lawrence's wrist. He yelled and jumped back. As her sword connected with his flesh, Afma had a glow surround her, and she saw again. Lawrence! She used her main powers and healed him. Garth stood amazed. He knew of her power, but this was different. They took her to her home, and she went to the basement and touched the things. She cried and fell on her knees, remembering her good memories. Things were different, all right. Afma was an angel demon mix, and that didn't mix well. Things would definitely be all. Things would definitely be different, all right. Let's just hope the changes. Let's just hope the changes are good. There is so much pain. Things are changing for all of us. Hopefully, they change for the better in the end. This chapter is what happens in the Nether stays in the Nether. With a th I suck at this so bad, guys. I'm sorry. With the way things were, they decided that Afma would not be allowed around Devon without tied hands or some restraint. It was a hard decision, but one they had to make for the Phoenix drop. Afma had moments where she would break down and cry, or even attempt to kill herself. Th these were more painful for them than some others. One time, she went full shadow night and broke restraints, almost killing Levin. They were afraid. She had been back eight months when something bizarre happened. Afma started to scream in pain. The guards rushed into her, and she screamed to them, Get Zoe! They brought her back, and she told them to leave. After a few hours, Zoe walked out with a look of surprise. Is Afma okay? They all shouted at her. Sh she, I don't know what to say. She's a mom. The twins... All the guards looked as if they had heard Zane was the father. Who's the dad? They asked. They were told to ask for themselves. Afma sat on her bed and held the children close. Pardon us, but who's the father? They asked. Afma sighed. I can't recall much. I remember a man. He hurt me. He threatened to hurt you. I give in, and this is what happened. They looked at Lawrence and ask the most bizarre question ever. Can Shadow Knights even do that? They were told that Shadow Knights could not feel true love, so their kids, which almost always died, were born for reproductive pur purposes. Afma looked at the guards. Meet the newest members of Phoenix Drop, Allison and Andy. She held them up to the guards. Take them around so they can meet everyone. Once they left, she spoke her thoughts out loud. What happens in the nether states in the nether. I'm going to skip that. Troublesome times. Afma's point of view. Lawrence had been trying to help me control my thoughts. 
It's difficult. The thoughts are dark. Sometimes I feel like Levin needs to die. Oh no, I'm wrong. Ugh, I can't do this. Narrator's point of view. With the twins around, Afma was beginning to better her control. The twins, the twins were rambunctious. Allison was energetic, and Andy was an explorer. Garth was always called Dada. Lawrence was brother or brother. Taking care of them, they would play hide and seek. Kawhi Chen always called them her niece and nephew. Afma was fine with that. After about nine months, Afma was in control and could finally see Levin without restraints. Running up to him, she hugged him tightly. Oh, Levin. Crying, she walked through the village. Afma heard a scream and ran to the gate. She saw shadow souls were surrounding the gates. Afma was losing control. Lawrence shadowed up and tried to keep Afma from shadowing up. He had failed. As she shadowed up, they saw that her form was different, more powerful than Lawrence's. She, he couldn't strike her down. She attacked Levin. He was near death, and the twins had seen their mother. They were scared. Mama! Mama, bad! They ran and hid as Afma changed back. Things were going to change for the worst. Hope you guys enjoyed. And make sure to have fun or char char that like button. Yay! And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye!